Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to save a little bit of money and get the best speeds for an external hard drive routing into your DAW. Uh, for this video, you're going to have to have a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port available. Otherwise, you're probably going to get a little slower speeds. You can work with this on a USB 3 port, but if you want the best bang for your buck, the USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, which are on the newer Macs, are going to be, I think, the best value for what you're going to get. Uh, of course, you're going to have the Thunderbolt, which goes up to 40 gigabits per second. That's on your Thunderbolt 3. But the USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports go up to 10 gigabits per second. Theoretically, four times is slower, but to me, it's really, really, really fast already. So this is actually the exact computer I have, the new Mac Mini 2018. It's been working amazingly. Um, and I have two external hard drives running into the back of my uh, USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, which are technically a combo port to the Thunderbolt 3. So let me show you the exact equipment I have. The first thing I got was a MX500 one terabyte SSD. Um, you could pick these up even used, probably for a great deal on you know Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, wherever else. Um, I like my electronics new just because I'm weird like that. But of course, people are selling these for even cheaper than this. Just so I could show you the price difference of a one terabyte SSD plus a cable and enclosure, uh, we could actually get that for $126 if we show that here. So the cable in the, in the enclosure are going to be this cable, which I tried to find <laughs> one of the most more reliable ones on Amazon. Uh, but of course, this is going to be the Gen 2 USB 3.1 cable. I got one in white and black. That way I have one for each enclosure. And the actual enclosure I got was this one from Ugreen. Uh, Ugreen's a, a great company. Uh, they're not sponsoring me in any way to say this. I bought other Ugreen products in the past and they've been great. So I got this $15 USB 3.1 Gen 2 enclosure. It comes with a USB 3 cable, but you have to get this cable separately if you want a USB 3.1 Gen 2 cable, all right? This is gonna be USB-C. So if we combine all three of these items, the enclosure, the USB-C cable, and the hard drive, we're gonna be running around 126 bucks uh, before tax. Now, if we go for a random, let's just say a portable hard drive from Samsung, we go to one terabyte, we're gonna be looking at $180 before tax. Maybe you guys don't need one terabyte of space, but but these libraries can get pretty big, uh, especially if you have like anything from native instruments or output. Even Spectrasonics has a pretty big library in their Steam folder. So if I just show you how much space this is being taken up already, um, let me right click on my sounds. Just from here, it looks like I'm using almost one terabyte of space already. And this is just from my sound libraries, drum libraries, all, all those different things. If we look here, I have all my native instruments libraries, everything from output, got my spectrosonic stuff. I only have atmosphere, but if I add on to that, of course it's gonna grow. And it's been working great, I have to tell you. But just so you could see the price difference, we're looking at 180 bucks to 126 bucks. If you're be saving a decent chunk of change for essentially the same speeds. So if we look at here, it says super fast read and write speed of up to 540 megabits per second. Now, if we look on the actual websites, it says the same thing. This is Samsung's website directly for the portable SSD, the T5. If we look at the specs, it says similar up to 540. If we look at crucials, this is technically supposed to be used as an internal SSD. It goes up to 560 read and 510 write, which is, I would say, virtually identical. But we're going to be using this internal SSD, which most people would use for like their desktops or maybe other laptops where they could swap in. And we're going to be using it as an external SSD with this enclosure and cable. And it's going to be running at the same exact speeds as if you were to buy something like this Samsung portable SSD. Of course, I think in general, if you do it yourself, you're going to be saving money. That's with anything. So they'll mark up the price a little bit to make it more convenient for you. And I actually did run a test using a utility, I believe, Amorphous Dismark. When I ran the test, it did reflect what Crucial said. It was running around 500 to 550 write and read, which was really, really fast. And that reflects within my DAW in Ableton, things read 
pretty much instantly. I remember when I was on my Windows system, I had to use the batch resave, if any of you guys are familiar with that, within contact in order to load things much faster. But this is essentially doing the same thing without having to do it. <laughs> For other you nerds or geeks out there like me, uh, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this website called User Benchmark. If you go to the SSD section, essentially the top 25 SSDs are going to be all crucial in Samsung. Um, both have really good reliability, really good warranties, and I think for the best bang for your buck, you're going to want to go with Crucial because it's a little cheaper and you're going to be getting essentially the same performance. Just to show you a massive price difference between the Samsung uh, external hard drive, which is going to be your USB 3.1 USB-C device, to a Thunderbolt device, now, we're going to get into a huge leap here. The one terabyte external Thunderbolt 3 device is going to be $430, which is ridiculous. Now, I know on you know the Mac Mini site or Apple site, you're going to apparently be getting four times the amount of speed, but is that really worth it for, you know, essentially quadruple the price? I mean, I don't think so, especially for what you're going to be doing within your DAW. I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. My load times are, are a few seconds. I mean, essentially, am I, am I going to save like one to two seconds? I don't think that's going to be worth it. One thing I wanted to show you guys is when you actually get your external hard drive set up and Mac asks you to format the drive, make sure you format it as an APFS. Now, there's an article here that I could show you briefly, but of course you could do your own research yourself. I believe it stands for Apple uh, File System. And essentially, this came out, I think, a few years ago, and it's optimized specifically for solid-state drives. It's faster, uh, more reliable. Of course, you could do your own research, but just from this website, you know, the best thing for speeds and reliability, if you really want, is going to be your APFS. When it asks you initially, it'll give you different options. I think one drawback, this article was saying that APFS doesn't allow you to use Time Machine, but I really don't need that, so it's up to you guys whether or not you actually need Time Machine. But if you're looking for speed and reliability and the newest optimizations that Apple could offer, definitely go with APFS, the Apple file system. I have two hard drives that I use externally. One is for my Ableton projects, which is typically going to be writing two. And I have one for my sounds and all my libraries, which is typically going to be reading from. This is APFS as well as my Ableton is APFS. And if you look here, um, I've already used almost a terabyte of my libraries and I haven't even installed all of them. I still have my Arturia V collection that I haven't installed and in the future I may get other products. So these could definitely fill up pretty quickly. If your guys' libraries are a lot smaller, maybe one terabyte will do enough for you. But for me, I went with the um, MX500 two terabyte. I believe if we look at the price difference, let's click on the two terabyte version look to be around $223 plus if you add the enclosure add another 30 bucks ends up being around 252 or something like that if we look at a comparable one from Samsung look at the 2 terabyte we're jumping up to 280 so not that big of a difference we're saving around $30 or so but still you're saving at least a little bit of money. Um, 30 bucks, hey, that can get you your next meal or something. Maybe give you some gas money. Again, you'll be getting the same performance and you'll be able to swap the drive or do whatever you need to swap the cable, do different things like that. You'll definitely be saving money in the long run. Now I'm gonna show you guys a uh, real life test here where I have a instance of contact loaded. For this one, I have analog strings batch resaved. So I did it just to show you guys how fast this is in comparison to batch resave, which is awesomely fast as well. So if I load analog strings, it looks like it's a 30 gigabyte uh, instrument. Let's load that up. So it took about five seconds, right? And we'll play something. Sounds great. Uh, so if we load another library, I don't have any other library uh, batch resave. Let's just try this one. How much is this? 16 gigs, still a big, a big library, but let's just try to load it. This one took, I think, even a shorter, a shorter amount of time, but of course the, the sample size is a little smaller. But again, this is not a batch resave file. The only one I've done that for is analog string. So 
how fast that loaded is really insane compared to um, other hard drives I've had in the past. If we find, let's see if we have another uh, 20 gigs around. That's actually a decent size. Let's try this one. Again, really quick, really quick. So yeah, that's essentially how to save a little bit of money um, using some external hard drives with an external enclosure and a USB-C cable. Again, make sure if you don't want to use these exact cables, you could look at other cables. Just make sure that they're Gen 2 USB 3.1, okay? Make sure that you're not using Gen 1 or some other type of cable. That's kind of a final thing. Of course, you could use other enclosures. Just make sure they're USB 3.1 Gen 2. Um, but the one thing I like about this enclosure is that it slips on. So it's screwless. And I don't mean that it hasn't found a mate. It's actually screwless. You don't need to put any screws inside of it in order to secure your SSD to it. All you need to do is plop your SSD inside of it, slip it on, and it's good to go. And then you put your cable in the front. If you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them and I'll do my best to respond. Otherwise, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. Uh, appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time.